What is that piece? Again, this uh, this shell attached to this uh, black little stand. Um, it almost looks like this was some kind of a paper thing. This might have been on a, <clears throat> on a desk where this piece here was straight. And this is called trench art. And uh, during World War One and on, the GIs who came across these pieces, uh, just like everything through time, people made art pieces. They had a little extra time on their hands and some found objects. So this is taking military found objects that were on hand in the trenches and in the different sites that these GIs were in, and they made pieces with it. Well, I bought this and tried to determine what I was going to do with it, or more importantly, what I should do with it, or probably even better, what it wanted to be. And uh, so I came up with this the desktop sculpture. Designed to be your desk, portable, fun, and affordable. And this represents uh, kind of symbolic of the person. The question is, did that GI make it home? What happened to him? Where is he? Um, and the way I look at this, again, it's, it's kind of an overall bird, which is kind of the kind of teeth for a dog. And uh, certainly the shell representing war. The shell is kind of uh, going into battle, and the tail feathers of the plane end or kind of a little bit resemblance of his hand. He's reaching home, and that's the title of this sculpture, Coming Home. And you're able to take it at your desk and move it around at different points of pose. A little bit of fun. The nice thing about this barn, this, this tongue oil, you get it on there and it starts to set a little, take a little bite into the wood, mm -hmm. then you're able to uh, rejuvenate it, wet it out a little bit, and really hone it in nice. Now, when you say wet it out, what is that? Well, when I wet it out, I'm just dipping it in, getting a little dab, refreshing the surface, and it kind of, you know, the chemicals just kind of dissolve what's there as it starts to pack up, and allows me to put some layers on and really get a nice, nice sheen out of it. And what are you uh, putting on? What's the oil? Uh, well, I started sealing. I seal all the finishes with a uh, <clears throat> a shellac wash coat, which is a reduction of, of a wax with clear shellac. Or I'll use an amber if I want to get a little more patina in a piece, depending on the wood. This one I use a little amber to give it more patina. And I cut that with the natured alcohol. 50, 60 percent, and I dressed the wood initially uh, with that mixture, and it's uh, one of the best sealers in the world in terms of uh, moisture. So it dries into the wood, seals the paws, and then after that's dried for 24 hours, I'm able to uh, sand it down. I either use steel wool, 400 grit, and scotch Bright, and I try to get in where I just start to kiss the surface again of the wood to create a little powder. Um, so now I have a, a new uh, opportunity to absorb because the tongue oil is designed to go in the wood, not really lay on top. So I want a little bit of penetration. And then I'll coat it with uh, three, four, five, six pieces of tongue oil, buffing and rubbing in between. And then finally I'll put on a good quality wax. Uh, you can use uh, bowling alley type waxes. Use a couple of coats of bowling alley wax and appropriate pieces. And that's it. You really shouldn't have to do any more than that. If I'm able to buff it out on my mechanical wheels and stuff to really get a bright, hard finish, I will. Otherwise, I do it by hand. What type of wood is that? <clears throat> this is a walnut. Um, this is white oak. And this is uh, brown ash. All American woods. The kind of wood that perhaps was uh, in a lot of mil military equipment uh, back in the day in World War One, when they made things out of wood ash, as in the automobile industry in plain, uh, it's, it's bendable. This is all hand carved. This is in bent. So that's about ready. Now let's color the finish or two and some polish, and be ready to go.